Hello, everyone. Uh, we're happy to host here today uh, Rana, who is a PhD student at uh, Tau University, has graduated very recently, or is supposed to graduate very recently soon. <laughs> and she is going to be an assistant professor at the University of Chicago. So congratulations on that. And uh, Rana is going to talk about uh, neural 3D reconstruction. Go ahead. Thank you. Thanks, Miri. Uh, and also thank you for the invitation. Uh, so 3D models are used in many fields from manufacturing to medicine and entertainment, but the demand is growing faster than we can construct them manually. We could obtain a 3D model by scanning a real world object, but this requires an additional processing step to reconstruct the underlying surface. Surface reconstruction is a difficult problem, which is intractable and ill-posed. To make things even more difficult, scan data is never perfect. It contains noise and outliers, has regions with sparse samples or holes, and it doesn't have enough points sampled on sharp features, which ultimately leads to undesirable reconstruction results. And if the normals are unor unoriented, we must orient them as a prerequisite for surface reconstruction, among other things. So today I'm gonna to talk about three different neural reconstruction works. The first consolidates a noisy point cloud, which means removes noise and adds new points. Another learns to estimate a globally consistent normal orientation. And the other reconstructs the underlying surface directly from the noisy and imperfect scan input, and it can even handle unoriented normals. In the next section, I'm going to talk about these two works. These works learn from the internal data within a single shape for reconstruction. The most popular use of deep neural networks involves training them on big data, which requires generating really large external data sets. But this is especially challenging for 3D because it's hard to obtain a large amount of geometric data that's usable, which means watertight, manifold, et cetera. And even if the geometric data is usable, it's still inherently inconsistent because the same exact shape can be represented using many different underlying meshings. And this type of Inconsistency makes learning ambiguous and challenging. I'd like to bypass collecting and annotating and learning from large, complicated 3D data sets. Instead, we can learn from the internal data within a single shape without needing to pre-train on any external data sets. There is a lot of internal data within only a single shape. Shapes can have repeating structures or elements, and they often have symmetries. More generally, it's possible to represent an entire shape through a small number of local patches. And that means that similar patches must repeat within a single shape. There is a lot of useful patch data, which is unique to this particular shape, and we can leverage and learn from it. We call learning from the internal data from a single example using deep neural networks the self prior. The self prior trains on the internal data in the single given input during test time, where the inductive bias of neural networks with shared weights results in desirable solutions. Let's talk about how we use the self prior to consolidate point clouds, which means remove noise and generate new points, which is used as a pre-process for surface reconstruction. We train a neural network on the internal data within a single given input point cloud. And we exploit the fact that we can randomly select many, many different pairs of global subsets from this one input point cloud. And the network is trained to repeatedly learn this mapping from one randomly selected subset to another, and that implicitly removes noise and outliers. When we're done training, we again feed many random subsets to the network, 
And this can generate an arbitrarily large amount of noise-free points. And I think this result is pretty amazing because given only a noisy input, we're able to output a cleaner and better version of the underlying shape. And this is due to the fact that the network doesn't have the capacity to predict noise or outliers, and that's exactly the effect of the self prior. And when we use this as an input to an off-the-shelf surface reconstruction algorithm, we obtain better results. So we loosely partition the points into source and target groups based on some desirable consolidation criteria. For example, in the case of sharp feature consolidation, you can see here how the points are roughly grouped into sharp, which is red, and not sharp, which is blue, groups. And this, we just use a really simple definition of sharp, which is based on an estimate of uh, local curvature. And that's really sufficient for this grouping because networks are good at understanding the core modes of the data and just ignoring outliers. During training, we repeatedly sample global subsets from the single input point cloud, where we rebalance the target subset to contain mostly sharp points. On the other hand, the source subset contains a much lo lower percentage of sharp points. And we train a network to repeatedly displace source subsets to, re to resemble target subsets. And our loss is a bi-directional chamfer distance between both of these point sets. When we're finished training, we can use the self prior to upsample the point cloud by feeding many random subsets to the network. We can generate an arbitrarily large amount of noise-free points which an, with an emphasis on the consolidation criteria. So for example, sharp feature points. One thing we think is really unique about this work is that it operates on global subsets and that learns to exploit some non-local information. For example, if we take this input, which is a 3D LiDAR scanner that has some undesirable sampling pattern, if we train a network on a single local patch, you can see that the consolidated result in yellow is overfit to the input points in blue. And on the other hand, if we train a network on global subsets, the shared weights will exploit the redundancy present in a single shape. And this encourages a more plausible, smoother solution. Here we train the network to emphasize adding points in, in sparse regions. So this is as opposed to, to sharp ones. And this will enable us to add points in sparsely sampled regions for this real scan. If we use the consolidated point cloud as an input to an off the shelf surface reconstruction algorithm, which in this case is a ball pivot, we obtain better results instead of um, just using the input point cloud directly. And so instead of using some generic reconstruction algorithm, I will show you how we can directly reconstruct the surface using the self prior. In this work, point to mesh, we use the self prior to reconstruct a surface mesh directly from noisy scan data. And we use the internal data within the single given input point cloud to learn a self prior for surface reconstruction. Given a set of points sampled from the surface of an object, surface reconstruction aims to recover the underlying shape. But this is an intractable problem, and it's been studied extensively for 20 years. Let me show you what I mean with a simpler example of just a few points. There are infinitely many curves or surfaces that pass through these points. And another way of saying this is the problem is ill-posed. So in order to pick the favorable solution or reconstruction result, this requires designing some type of prior that captures the expected shape properties. But building a prior is challenging, especially when shapes get more complicated than this very simple illustration. Conventional techniques define some generic smoothness prior for reconstruction. But as you can see here, this will reconstruct holes in a way that ignores the character of the global shape. In other words, a handcrafted smoothness prior is too generic to tailor itself to any one particular shape. 
On the other hand, our self prior is tailored to every single input using a mesh convolutional neural network that's trained on the internal data in the corrupted input itself. And that's the self prior. The self prior produces a more plausible reconstruction because it learns the character of the shape. And this is really effective when completing missing parts like you see here or removing outliers and noise. And again, here, this is because the convolutional neural network doesn't have the capacity to exactly fit all the noise and the outliers in the input, the reconstruction is going to be better than the input. So the way our self prior works is through a method of shrink wrapping. We start with an input point cloud and some initial mesh, and then we iteratively optimize the CNN weights to deform the mesh to shrink wrap the input point cloud. And this strategy is actually really appealing because it gives us all sorts of geometric guarantees like ensuring our reconstruction is watertight or manifold and can even preserve the genus. Because of these desirable properties, shrink wrapping has been attempted many times before, but these attempts were considered unsuccessful. They required manual tuning or intervention to work on different shapes. But point to mesh successfully performs the shrink wrapping by leveraging the power of neural networks to learn from internal data. The optimized convolutional neural network weights act as a self prior and they encode the expected shape properties. And the key to the self prior is this unique structure of a convolutional neural network, right? On the one hand, the convolutions are applied locally and on the other, the same local filters are utilized over the entire shape. The premise here is that shapes are not random. They, they contain strong self correlations across multiple scales. The CNN used in this work relies on our earlier work, Mesh CNN, which is a technique for applying convolutional neural networks on irregular triangular meshes. Mesh CNN le learns deep features on the edges of a mesh, which have a fixed size one ring neighborhood of four edges. That's the key takeaway of this work. And Mesh CNN gives us the framework that is needed to, to employ convolutional neural networks. So, um, and these are applied directly on mesh edges. And in this work, we use these operators for learning the self prior. So the way point to mesh works is as follows. We start with an input point cloud, and then we use this to calculate an initial mesh. If we know the genus is zero, we can compute the initial mesh using a convex hull. And for a non-zero uh, genus shape, we can use other techniques, and I'll touch on that a bit later. So the initial mesh is used as an input to a mesh convolutional neural network, which displaces the mesh vertices, resulting in a deformed mesh. The deformed mesh is then sampled to obtain a set of points. And then we calculate the distance between these two, which is used as a signal to update mesh CNN weights. And we iteratively perform this update where the deformed mesh in the next iteration should more closely approximate the input point cloud. So more specifically, this deformable initial mesh M, it defines the adjacency information for convolutions and pooling in mesh CNN. But unlike mesh CNN, our input features here are a fixed random input per edge. And this idea is sort of inspired from a, a meta perspective by deep image prior. Since mesh CNN operates on edges, the network abstracts each random feature uh, vector in C to a displacement vector per edge. Um, uh, and, and so because, sorry. Uh, so, yeah, so once we have these uh, displacement vectors per edge, we need to average them over each vertex and get a displacement vector per vertex. And we initialize this displacement to be zero in the first pass such that the, the initial mesh is equal to, um, the, the, the deformed mesh is equal to the initial mesh in, in the first pass. And so, um, The reconstructed mesh goes through a differential sampler, 
And the, the way this works is first, the, the sampler randomly selects a triangle with probability proportional to the face area. And then a point is randomly sampled on the triangle surface whose X, Y, Z location is defined by the three triangle vertices, which is how gradients are back propagated through the sampler to update the CNN weights, which displace the vertices. The loss is computed by comparing the sampled reconstructed mesh to the input point cloud. And we use a bi-directional time for distance, which means for every point in the reconstructed mesh, we take the distance to the closest point in the input point cloud and sum them. And in addition to this Euclidean distance, we also compare the normals from the input point cloud and the reconstructed mesh. In practice, we employ this framework in a course defined manner. First, we use some low resolution initial mesh, which is roughly a few thousand faces. And then we run uh, a thousand iterations of this procedure and pass the reconstructed mesh to a uh, robust watertight manifold technique, which increases the resolution and, and smooths the result. And then we initialize um, a new network and a new random feature tensor on this higher resolution mesh. And then we rerun this optimization procedure again, usually for a thousand, a thousand iterations. And this is repeated until we reach the desired resolution. I really like this example because it illustrates how the network acts as a prior. So if we directly optimize the mesh vertex locations instead of the CNN, it becomes trapped in this local minima. But if we optimize the CNN weights to displace the mesh vertices, then the mesh enters this difficult second order cavity. And here we see exactly how the network behaves like a prior because it gives us a different solution than this trivial mesh optimization. The self prior helps avoid local minima, which is key to the success of point to mesh. Design a powerful enough prior to avoid these local minima. And this really demonstrates the power of using a mesh convolutional neural network for this internal learning. We also used point to mesh to reconstruct objects that we scanned using a real 3D scanner. And even though there's noise and low density patches where the scanner fails to properly sample the surface, our reconstructions still handle these regions well. And those geometric guarantees I mentioned earlier, they come in handy because then we can 3D print this. Here you can see that the self prior naturally removes noise from the corrupted input. And this works better than a traditional smoothness prior or networks trained on external data. And since existing techniques do, don't use any genus information, they may introduce topological errors and reconstruct a surface with the incorrect genus. Also, without global weight sharing over a single watertight surface, it's difficult to properly fill holes. And since the genus is provided implicitly to our method through the initial mesh, this provides control and can, can be seen as an advantage for hole filling. In this example, Poisson will reconstruct a surface with incorrect topological holes. We applied a low resolution octree to close the incorrect holes and create a coarser mesh that we used as an initial uh, mesh as input to our technique. And so the result is a topologically correct mesh, which preserves the details from the input point cloud, yet still doesn't overfit to noise and um, incorrect low density regions. So using a coarse resolution octree on the result of Poisson reconstruction is one approach for estimating initial meshes with an unknown genus. Point to mesh can also handle unoriented point normals, which I'll discuss in depth in the next section. But here, what we did is we estimated unoriented normals in the input point cloud, where each point is colored using a heat map of the angle errors. Existing techniques are sensitive to this incorrect normal orientation, and that will produce these undesirable artifacts. But our approach is agnostic to 
normal orientation. And this is yet another, I think, really powerful aspect of point mesh because oriented normals are a prerequisite for surface reconstruction, whereas in using our solution, we can bypass this altogether. So to wrap up this section, both of these works demonstrated how to leverage the internal data within noisy scans to learn a self prior for reconstruction. From just the internal data in the given noisy input, we're able to generate many noise-free points and solve a challenging global shrink wrapping optimization. Okay, so in this next section, I'm going to talk about a new work that Gal is going to present in this coming SIGGRAPH in a couple months, which focuses on the normal orientation problem. Point clouds obtained from scanners may lack normal information, or it can it must be recomputed when we're doing some sort of point cloud processing or editing of the data, like resampling or consolidation. Recently, there's been a new source of point clouds that lack oriented normals, and these are network generated point clouds. So we have all these sources of point clouds which don't have a normal orientation, but normals are required, oriented normals are required to do things like voxelize volumes, uh, render point clouds, sign distance fields, and reconstruct surfaces. A normal is a vector that's perpendicular to the surface, and we calculate it by fitting a plane to nearby points. And this normal is correct up to the sign or the orientation of the vector. We say a normal is oriented if all of the normals point outside the surface. Uh, but since we fit local planes, we don't actually know the sign of the normal or the orientation of it. In order to calculate a consistent normal orientation, we need to consider the global context. For example, if we look at the same patch in isolation, it's completely ambiguous whether this patch points inside or or outside the shape, right? Here we developed a method for orienting point normals and <clears throat> the results of the estimated normals are shown here, um, which are colored using a heat map of the angle errors. So observe how the reconstruction is very sensitive to point normals with the incorrect normal orientation. Using our solution, we divide the approach into two phases. So in the first phase, we train a neural network to learn a coherent normal direction within a single patch. And in the global phase, we propagate the orientation across all coherently oriented patches using a dipole propagation. This approach I think is really interesting because we let the network handle the difficult, highly convex cases with a network. And then we use this robust dipole propagation to orient all the patches globally. So in the local phase, a uh, network predicts a coherent orientation per patch. In this case, this that would result in all the normals consistently pointing either inside or outside the surface for this one patch. It's a probability per point that the normal should be flipped. The problem is that there is actually two equally valid ways to coherently orient a patch. We could either flip one subset of the point cloud or its inverse. But And both of these would lead to coherently oriented patches or two valid answers. But if we trained on both of them, that would make the network objective discontinuous and oscillatory, which is really non-ideal. So we create a better and more smooth training objective by uniquely determining a single solution for each input point cloud patch based on the majority direction of the input normals. We always aim to predict a high flip probability for the smaller subset and a low flip probability for the larger subset. We train the network to learn to flip the smaller subset of input points. And if we invert the normals in the patch, the network should predict the same exact flip probabilities. 
Now that we have coherently oriented all the patches in the local phase, we propagate the global orientation iteratively to all the patches. We start by selecting a planar patch, and then we treat each point in the patch as an electric dipole with polarization that points in the normal direction. Here is the electric potential dissipated by the dipoles, where blue and red will eventually correspond to inside-outside segmentation. We measure the interaction between the gradient of the potential and the normal of each point left to be oriented, weighted by the flip probabilities or certainty scores of the network. So the highest interaction is shown here, where the length of each line is proportional to the interaction value in the direction of the unoriented normal. Then we add its effect to the total electric field. And we continue this process. In this case, the interaction is negative. So we flip the patch before adding its effect to the total electric field. This continues until there's no more patches left to be oriented. Here's how the propagation will look for a more complicated, highly non-convex shape. And you can see how the propagation doesn't necessarily move to nearby patches, right? Which is what sort of standard MST-based techniques are, are doing. So if a few local errors exist, for example, due to noise or errors in the network, this will only degrade the electric potential locally. In other words, this global electric field is still going to be robust to errors that may exist. And a nice byproduct of this is that we can leverage this final sort of powerful global electric field to correct any lingering errors. And we call this step diffusion. So we reevaluate the interaction of every individual point with the electric field. And points that don't agree with the global field are flipped individually. And this step is really helpful for fixing local errors that may have been predicted by the network. And the propagation phase will only flip entire patches so it can't fix any errors that the, that the network may have predicted. Our diffusion and our network predicted flip probabilities are both crucial for uh, obtaining a, this desirable result. If we don't use the network predicted flip probabilities to weight the dipole propagation, then we're left with a lot of errors which the diffusion step can't fix. And if we don't use the diffusion step, some lingering errors from the uh, network predicted phase will be le left over. Our method even scales to millions of points, which takes uh, approximately 13 minutes for 1 million points, which is, which is a very, very large amount of points. And here are the corresponding uh, reconstructions. So some take home messages from this talk are that we can use the self prior for reconstruction and I think there may be other interesting ways that we can use the self prior. We also showed that we can effectively combine a data-driven technique for solving a complex local problem and that with a robust global propagation technique gives us these, these nice results. Um, and I personally think that the combination of networks and robust optimization is this unique uh, opportunity for being able to leverage data-driven methods with the robustness of, of classic optimization. My group at the University of Chicago is now starting to look at a few different problems related to these directions. We're interested in using the self prior for other problems in geometry, like for deformation, animation, and shape editing. And another thing we're interested in is leveraging data-driven networks for salient feature extraction and combining them with robust optimization. 
we're thinking about how to use this for texture mapping and shape manipulation. The code and the papers for these works are on my website. And if you're interested in working on some of these or related problems, please feel free to get in touch. OK, thank you uh, for the excellent talk. We'll have some uh, questions now. Sure. Uh, maybe I'll start in the, in the, in the first part of your talk. Um, 